Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Weapon. I'm Cal. And I'm Sunny. Do you have any idea what we're talking about today? New. So, the very first episode I had with you was How to Capture a Gamer Girl with Contrast Paint. Yes. A very cheeky title. Yes. And you started out pretty much exclusively with contrast paint. I did. Because my thought process was you've done this Xenophil Prime and then you told me how contrast paint works and I just thought that that's just how you're meant to paint on top of Xenophil Primes. So with the contrast paint, it just, your your values have already been set by the Xenophil. So you're just like putting a color wash on top of that. So I just thought- I'm, I'm just gonna cut you off for a yeah. second. Can you explain to the people what values are? Values are basically what um, determines the lightness and darkness in an artwork. So shadows would be the darkest values. Your highlights would be the lightest of the values. So if I could put it in simple terms for people, if you turned uh, any picture into black and white, Mm that's what the values would be yes okay continue yeah so because with xenothal prime you're it's a black and white right you're already putting in your values in place your shadows and your highlights have already been set all you have to do is put a color on top and it automatically shades your artwork if you will yeah right so and i'm just thinking to myself why would i ruin the xenothal prime by doing you know base base using base paints Mm -hmm. layer paints opaque stuff not the translucent stuff yeah and i was too afraid to mess it up so and i didn't use my brain for some reason to think hey you can actually just use your three color scheme right like like for example you're using a green color yeah you have three shades your dark green your medium green and your light green yeah you just put the dark green at the black parts the medium green at the gray parts and the light green at like the whitish parts and you just blend it together. I didn't use my brain to think that. Well, see, I, th- I think that that's pretty interesting because I think a lot of people, when it comes to this, the reason why they're Xenothal and one of the reasons I Xenothal is because I want to see those values and I use that as my mental map. And then I'll often paint the base layer over all of that area but lightly and then build up from there oh okay yeah but like i think xenothal prime is a very important step if you know how to do it just cause it really takes away the pressure from painting by a thousand percent you don't have to think on where you need to put the colors you just know this is where your shadow color goes this is where your mid-tone goes this is where your highlight goes and when you say uh, where the colors go, what you mean is where the, the, the darker and, and yeah, the I don't mean like color theory, like what color do you want to use? That's a different thing, which I actually have a little bit of a tip that maybe yeah, the mini it. painters don't know about this website. It. It's called coolers, C O O L O R S dot com. And you, it's, it's a color palette generator website. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know what colors you want to use, but roughly maybe, you know, you want to use like a green and a blue, you can put that into the color generator and it'll show you a whole different types of variations of color palettes using greens and blues. And you can just pick the one you want and then maybe choose colors in your paint rack that matches that and just go to town. Yeah, I think one of the big things is with when it comes to color theory and that sort of thing, people are fairly rigid with sticking to one one particular theme. So, for example, you, you can't have pink ultramarines, right? Yeah, well, it's, that's also because it's an army. They have specific yeah, colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. But that's why I like the more skirmish level games because... Yeah. You can have that level of variation, right? And see, the thing is, right, well, you could actually have pink ultramarines if they were scouting some area and that sort of thing. Like, there is law behind it. However, the problem is they've specifically said at the Golden Demons, these are the big awards for 
games mini workshop. Painting, yeah. Well, for games workshop specifically. specifically. Oh, yeah. So like, it's not for all miniature painting. It's only for games workshop. They said it wouldn't matter if the best paint job in the world was there, but it was a pink ultramarine. They would never let it be the finalist. They'd never let it because because it's not the official. Well, because it goes against the law, essentially. Aww. You know, and okay, yeah. that's. That's some of the restrictions that we have floating about in this hobby. They're not technical restrictions that, like, people aren't imposing them from high, but people do feel them. I see. Yeah, but I suppose that's, again, a difference between painting, for example, D&D models versus wargaming army level painting models where they have specific color schemes you already have to choose so you don't have to think about it yeah but dnd stuff you'll probably be thinking like okay what am i gonna make his cape and his boots and his shirt like what's his story why does he have this color scheme sort of thing it's a lot of pressure some of the times especially if you don't have art background but even artists especially like myself i also find it a bit pressurizing some of the times what colors I want to use so I can understand it. Mm -hmm. I guess what I want to ask you is this. When I made that cheeky title, what it was mostly about is how can you get the person in your life you most care about into your hobby? And the thing was, you became very passionate about it very quickly. But with that, I want to ask, how has your perceptions changed? Um, I think because you also encouraged me to try different techniques. It always comes back to a, a feeling of pressure, really. Like, oh, I don't want to mess up this model. I don't want to mess up this prime. I don't want to mess this, mess that. So when, I, when you told me, why don't you do a model with purely layer painting? And I couldn't wrap my head around how I was going to do that because my mind was set on it's a Zenithal Prime. The values are already set. If I paint over that, it's going to be a problem because I might mess up the values by painting it in the wrong places, blah, blah, blah. I I understand. So, yeah. What, What about other motivations? Like what kept you painting? What kept you from painting? Um... Keeping me from painting might be like the usual stuff, like if you don't have the time for it. But the things that kept me to continue painting is when I gave it a shot and then I slowly started building a mental map and then I managed to weasel my way through in finding and figuring things out for myself. And then I was like, I came up with a good product at the end of the day. And of course, finishing a product always pushes you to do more. Mm -hmm. So basically these things. One of the things that I'm trying to get at here, right, is, is it just the love of painting that kept you painting? Or were there other aspects outside of painting that made you want to paint? Well, I think mainly painting together with you makes it more enjoyable with for me because like why would you want to do something you enjoy by yourself but okay some people will be like oh i prefer to be doing things on my own that's fine but for me i like i like doing things with friends with people so if there are people there i am more likely to do something okay great 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 what about outside pressures like for example you've got a game coming up because we used to game regularly um and we're not as much anymore uh we've got a lot going on but did you want to get specific models painted up for game day yes yes that's also one pressure like maybe you like a model it looks really cool but then you think to yourself what the hell would i use it for you know Though that's another consideration, especially if you live in a place where you don't have much space and you don't find yourself someone who fancies collectibles or like putting things up for displays. You don't find it very useful. It's a waste of space. Well, ladies might might agree with me on that. <laughs> I know I think that way. So I just feel like if I don't have a model that I feel I can actively use, I'm not going to paint it I, or feel like I can paint it. Yeah. Yeah, well... That was one of the big driving factors for yeah, you, so, wasn't it? Yeah, so like the fact that maybe we stopped gaming for a while, it made me feel like, what's the point in painting because I'm not going to play? So what? why should I paint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So I think that, you know, we, we've gone over a couple of things. What I want to ask you is, let's say that, let's go with the remote possibility that somebody got themselves a gamer girl using contrast paints. <laughs> Al, Al, the, uh, the podcast we did before. Yes. Or short video, whatever you want to call it, it's okay. Um, but, and they want to keep said gamer girl what do you think would keep you enjoying the hobby well i think you would have to get to know what this gamer girl likes is she a social person not a social person but i think continuing to be a presence when they are doing painting and like sharing knowledge and sharing paint techniques between each other but the act of painting together helps a lot Mm -hmm. at least this is just for me just because i love being around people and i like doing hobby with other hobbyists but like um i think that's something that helps a lot because you're constantly being sort of mentor mentee and you are you know sharing your little thought processes amongst each other that helps to open conversation and share your passion through that way Mm -hmm. yeah okay well i think that about covered it so uh you remember what they've got to do don't you i think so all right guys keep those Those brushes brushes wet. wet